Hello everybody and welcome back, this is Skidoon and it's time for another Minimator tutorial video. Now today's is going to be a little bit special because I'm going to do a little bit of a mini-series and I'm going to label this series How to Animate because I think a lot of people are kind of getting lost in all the different tutorials I have. Um, some of the basic concepts are kind of spread out between all of them so I figured I'd make kind of a condensed quick version of most of the core concepts you're going to need for an animation. So I guess the first step you're going to need is to get some scenery going. Um, now David has been nice enough to get... Actually before the scenery, let's talk about story. You're going to need a story. If you just start out kind of like I am and just start making a, randoma a random animation, that's what you're going to end up with is a random animation that doesn't have much depth to it. It's just, it's probably going to end up being 10 seconds long, which isn't bad to start out with, but eventually you stood, you should start making it up to a little bit more, uh, let's, let's call them mature animations. And I don't mean the content, I mean the technique involved. Um, but I'm actually going to have your help with the story, so we're going to kind of bypass that step and get on to the next couple steps. Um, and the first one that I um, would suggest <laughs> figuring out is your scenery. Um, <clears throat> scenery is a big thing. Having an animation just on a big blank white field doesn't give it much to work with. It doesn't show much of anything. It just shows a random character moving around on a blank field. So let's start by adding some, some scenery. So we're going to click Add. Go down to Scenery here. And I'm not going to go over the process of importing schematics from Minecraft. Um, I do have in-depth videos on those and those aren't hard to find. Those are just the schematic tutorials. Um, so let's let's take a look at the schematics that we already have in place. Um, let's see here. Your average cave, the amazing house. I remember that one. It's not very amazing. Um, let's just go with the wooden house. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a lovely wooden house. Now this, in Minecraft, you tend to have more than just blank grass on the field, so I am going to add one more schematic, and that schematic is going to be... Let's pull this open. Where is it? The grassy field. Let's open that up. Alright, we have our wonderful grassy field here, and I think I just changed my mind. I want to have this be a desert, so that's not hard to do. Let's just pick the desert. All right, so we've got a desert here, and we've got our house. Now, you can either move the desert down or the house up. Either works. Um, I'm just for ease, I'll probably just move the desert down. But one important step I want to talk about is naming your objects. Don't leave it scenery one and scenery two. Later down the road, when you've got tons and tons of sceneries and tons and tons of objects, it's going to be a little bit hard to remember what each one is. So I'm going to label this one house. And I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to label this one Desert. OK, now now that I have them down here on the timeline, the first part of the animating is adding keyframes. That's very easy to do, just pick the thing you're wanting to add a keyframe for. So in this, you can see I've got two rows here, the desert row and the house row. If I had more objects, there would be more rows. Since I want to move the desert down, I'm just going to click one keyframe here at the beginning. And over here, the options show up on the right for the properties. I'm going to go ahead and show position. I'm going to bring it down to about right there. And since I'm working with this schematic, I'm going to want to get rid of this green ground that's automatically there. So I'm going to hit OK here, twirl that close, go to background, and I'm going to click Show Ground. So now that green plot is not shown, and I am just using my schematics for my scenery. So let's look in the house, make sure we don't have any bushes. It looks like we've still got a little bit of sand right there from this. So we're going to want to move the desert back a little bit more. So let's go ahead and move that like so. Now it looks like our house is somewhat floating. So in this case, it might be easier just to move the house, but since I'm already going here, I'm just going to keep going with it. Just like that. Okay, looks like... Got a little sand... Creeping in here anywhere. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're good to go. 
And so now, one thing I want to point out, since I'm not going to be animating the house, animating the ground, I don't need to have them on my timeline anymore. When you have tons and tons of items, objects, characters, sceneries, your timeline does start to grow and you're going to have to start scrolling and that's just annoying to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Instance tab and I'm going to click the little kind of photo reel button and that removes it from the timeline. It doesn't remove it from the animation, it just hides it from the timeline. So the next step we're going to want to do is add a character. <clears throat> let's click Add and let's click Character. Um, now by default he does spawn where pretty much the house is currently. So we're going to want to click here. We're going to want to move him out just so we can see him. Now I highly suggest always using custom scans unless this is an animation based around Steve. Um, but adding a custom skin does help out. So you just, I'll go through that process again. Down here where it says skin, you're going to want to click on default, browse, and then we're going to want to go to wherever you've saved your skins. And for me, I always save it here in this skins folder, and we're going to click overalls. And this is my skin wearing some lovely ski overall, kind of a ski bib. So we've got Mr. Ski Dude there, and like I said, you're going to want to name your characters and objects and everything. So I'm going to name this one Ski. Next thing I want to do is, it's going to be kind of boring if it's just me and myself in this animation, so we're going to add a trusty, a trusty companion. We're going to change the model down to a wolf. Now I haven't customized a wolf skin, so we will use the default one. I'm going to pull him out here, click OK, and let's rename him Wolf. So now we've got a wolf, we've got Ski Dude, we've got our house built in this vast desert. Looks like there's a little bit more to the schematic, um, but uh, we're not going to go into that. Uh, we've got cactus, we've got dead plants. Now, you are going to want to work with background images or maybe another bigger schematic to surround this because depending on your camera angles, you don't want, so say I had the camera right here, you don't want to show kind of just like this blue, I guess that doesn't look too bad, but if I get the camera too high and say this was my camera angle, that's going to look somewhat bad because you're showing the limit of your animation. You want to make it look like there are no limits. So in this case, if I brought the camera right here and I was kind of like, let's say we get a close up from the sand and we're looking up, that doesn't look too bad because essentially maybe on the other side of the sand is a cliff and this is just the blue sky. Um, so you're going to want to make sure you're working well with your camera angles so that you're not showing the limits of your animation. Um, so the next step here, as always, when you start working with animations, is you're going to want to save. Save frequently in case it does crash. This is a beta version, so things do happen. So I'm going to um, save this. How to animate. Okay, now we're saved. Now, the next part pretty much would be we're going to start animating. We're going to start doing something with the wolf and ski dude. And that's where you guys come in. Um, anybody that's interested, go ahead and leave a two to five sentence kind of quick story that, we're, that I can choose to animate around. So maybe say there's a, ha there's a spider stuck in ski dude's house and he sends his wolf in to kill the spider. Or... Um, I don't know, just something along that. Something simple. I don't want something in depth that I'm going to have to like make all these custom props for, but just something simple, just so we can show the key concepts of animating. So if you're interested, go ahead and leave that in the comments. I'll pick one in the next coming days for the next episode that I'll try to get out next week, and uh, we'll go from there. So let's just do a quick recap of what we went over today. We went over adding schematics kind of planning out your animation and like I said I, I skipped the story part which really should be your first step get a story before you even open up Minimator um, so we put in our props we put in our characters we renamed everything so that it's easier to work with we hid some things from the timeline that we're not going to be messing with anymore to keep it nice clean and neat and we went into the background we hid the ground so that we're not having the grass pop through and um, if you want to specify in that animation, I'm actually going to make this nighttime. I think it's going to be a lot more fun with nighttime. So make sure that your um, story, I guess you don't have to mention anything night in your story, but we'll just go with that. So yeah. 
this was the first episode of How to Animate. If you've got any questions or suggestions of things you want to see me do in this series, I plan on just making a very quick animation. Go ahead and leave your story below, anything else you want to see me do, and uh, we'll go from there. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and if you liked it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And always check out the Minimator forums. People that are asking for like moving mouse, moving fingers, and things like that, those are already on the forums. People have made rigs, they've made downloads, things like that. They've made tutorials on how to use them. Um, so it's a very great place to look for kind of new features to add to your, to your animations. So I will catch you guys later. This is Ski Dude. Peace.